The human body is capable of withstanding massive amounts of trauma. Until it's not. Recently I told the stories of people who survived unbelievable injuries and odds and somehow came out the other end unscathed. A pole through the mouth, a nail gun into the brain, a soldier that was shot so many times. I lost count. But most of us aren't so lucky. Most of us wouldn't survive those types of injuries. But there are some people that are the exact opposite. People who met their unfortunate ends in ironic and bizarre and totally mundane situations. So get ready for a whole new set of phobias. Here's 10 people who died from incredibly minor injuries. I live my life like a boy scout, not because I'm afraid I'm gonna get in trouble, because I'm afraid I'm gonna die. Because I know that whatever it is I'm doing, if I die doing it, that's what I'm gonna be remembered for for the rest of my life. Actually, the rest of time, because I'll be dead. I could give to charity, I could change millions of people's lives to this YouTube channel, I could invent cold fusion, but if I died while I was molesting a ferret, that's all anybody would ever remember of me. Oh, remember that YouTuber, Joe Scott? Oh yeah, he was that dude that was a ferret. And that is why I don't molest ferrets. There are other reasons. But this isn't a video about people who died doing stupid things. This isn't a Darwin Awards video, which might be fun. This is a video about people who died doing just totally normal things, things that you and I might have done today. Now, some of these are extreme examples, and some of these did take place before the age of modern medicine when, you know, these injuries wouldn't be anything to us today. But again, that just kind of reinforces the idea of just how fragile we are and how much we depend on technology for our lives. And that really is the point of this video. It's not meant to scare or to sensationalize. It's just to point out the fact that this thing you got going on right now with the beating heart and the breathing, not something you should take for granted. Number 10, death from hamster spit. A man named Goro Ito from Japan had a pet hamster named Aiko. And one day he was playing around with Aiko and uh, the hamster bit him, like hamsters do. Bad hamster. And then unexplainably at first, Goro Ito died. Very bad hamster. The autopsy revealed that there was apparently some protein in the hamster spit that reacted badly in his body and his body went into anaphylactic shock and that's what killed him. Now, I've never heard of anybody being so allergic to a hamster that a bite would kill them, so it might have been something special in this particular hamster's saliva, or it might have been something special with Goro Ito, but either way, damn. Number nine, death from peacock scratch. Peacocks are known for their displays, but apparently they got a bit of a kick. On March 30th, 1997, a guy named Vikai Tongo uh, went out to feed one of his four peacocks. Apparently his family had a flock of peacocks when one of them jumped up and started clawing at his head. Probably not the best day he's ever had with his peacocks, but it didn't seem like anything that unusual. But then the next day he started suffering from really strong migraine headaches and then eventually fell into a coma. The hospital did a scan and found that there was a blood clot in his brain that was apparently caused by this peacock clawing at his head. It like dislodged something and it went up into his brain and put him into a coma. And yeah, he died the next day. Something tells me his family had one less peacock after that. Number eight, death from deodorant. Jonathan Capewell was a kid from Oldham, England, and like many kids, he wanted to smell good. He liked to spray some deodorant on himself, but apparently he took it a bit too far. Apparently he would cover his entire body with deodorant twice a day, and on July 20th, 1998, he died from a heart attack. The doctors determined that the heart attack was caused by the deodorant gases that had built up in his system over time because he did this in a very unventilated room. Apparently before he died, this was like a jokey thing amongst his family, that he sprayed so much deodorant that, you know, they, they couldn't hardly breathe downstairs, but I'm amazed how people can have phobias about the weirdest thing. He clearly had some kind of phobia about his, his body odor, and that's what caused him to do that. It's a shame. Number seven, death from manners. Tycho Brahe was a famed Danish astronomer. Many of you probably know who he is if you're really into astronomy. The big, huge crater at the bottom of the moon that has the rays that are spraying out from it. You can't miss it. That's actually called Tycho Crater. It's named after him. Well, Tycho Brahe did a lot of amazing things in his life, but his death was so bizarre. What basically happened was he was at a dinner party and it was apparently very rude to go to the bathroom, to get up to go to the bathroom or leave the table for any reason during a, a, a dinner back then. And he really needed to pee, but he refused to go for that reason. Apparently it built up so much it caused bladder complications and after the banquet he was unable to urinate the way he needed to. And 10 days later he died. Apparently he wrote his own epitaph and it read, he lived like a sage and died like a fool. Actually, Tycho didn't completely live like a sage. He lived a little bit like a fool as well because he famously wore a gold or bronze nose because his nose got cut off in a duel one time. Although it could be argued that duels were a matter of manners back then as well. That was a social custom that he stuck to and he suffered for that as well. 
Man, man, he might have been the most polite human being that ever lived. Number six, death by dessert. Adolf Frederick, the King of Sweden, actually ate himself to death in 1771 after a meal consisting of lobster, caviar, sauerkraut, cabbage soup, smoked herring, champagne, and 14 servings of his favorite dessert, Selma, which is bread dipped in a bowl of hot milk. He's actually known today by Swedish children as the king who ate himself to death. I wonder if Tycho Brahe was at that meal, because that would have taken a while. Number five, death by laughter. How many times have you said you died laughing at something? And you've never done it, have you? Poser. Well, Alex Mitchell of England did exactly that. On March 24th of 1975, he was watching an episode called The Kung Fu Capers of his favorite TV show called The Goo... The Goodies? The Goodies. He was watching the Kung Fu Capers episode of The Goodies where he wound up laughing for 25 minutes straight until it actually made his heart give out and he had a heart attack and he died. As tragic as that is, his widow actually sent a letter to the goodies actually thanking them for making his final moments so wonderful. And I don't know about you, but I really want to see what this show was now. Number four, Death by Fastball. Ray Chappy Chapman was a shortstop for the Cleveland Indians, and in 1920 he was taking a pitch from Carl Mays that went a little bit awry and hit him in the temple. Well, Carl Mays must have had a hell of an arm because this actually knocked him out and he died. To this day, he's the only baseball player that has ever died from getting hit by a pitch. Number three, death by frustration. Jack Daniels, yes, the Jack Daniels, died from an infection in his toe. An infection that began because uh, when he woke up one day in 1911, he was trying to get something out of his safe. He couldn't remember the combination to the safe, couldn't get the safe to open, so he kicked the safe in frustration. Broke his toe, caused an infection, gangrene set in, and that did him in. And apparently his last words were, one more drink, please. Number two, death by tongue. Alan Pinkerton, who founded the famous Pinkerton Detective Agency, was just walking down the street in Chicago in 1884, and he slipped, which caused him to bite down on his tongue. And apparently this was not like the kind of bite you get when you're, you know, eating crackers and you slip and you bite your tongue. This was so bad it actually like broke through the tongue. The tongue became infected. He got gangrene, died. This must have been before Listerine. And number one, death by irony. Bobby Leach was one of the greatest daredevils of all time at the beginning of the last century. He was known for doing some really crazy stunts, but one of the biggest stunts he ever did, he was the second person to go over Niagara Falls in a barrel. I'm still not sure why people wanted to do that so badly, but that was just a huge thing once upon a time. But after a lifetime of cheating death in various crazy ways, he was apparently just walking down the street one day in New Zealand, slipped on an orange peel, and broke his leg. Once again, an infection set in from the broken leg. Complications resulted from that. Gangrene died. See, and this is the kind of thing that I was talking about at the beginning. If you're a stuntman, of course, you're going to wind up going in some totally <laughs> mundane way. At least I would. That's the story of my life. So what can we learn from this? I guess one way to look at it is that the body is like a fine-tuned machine, really, when it comes down to it. And all it takes is just one little glitch to make the whole thing fall apart. I mean, if you think about it, the things that kill most people are very tiny things. Strokes, heart attacks, clogged arteries, blood clots, those kinds of things. Those kill people every single day, and they're microscopic. So maybe it's not so much the size of the injury as where you get it. So enjoy the life you have. Don't let this video freak you out too much because uh, the reason these are noteworthy is because they were so bizarre and strange. Most people would not die from things so simple. And by the way, like I said at the beginning, most of these took place at a time before the kind of medicine that we have now. I doubt if you kicked your safe that you would die from your toe getting infected. But just to be safe, um, leave the ferrets alone. And just real quick, I wanted to let you guys know I do have a podcast if you're into that kind of thing. I'd recorded a podcast recently where I talked to Doug Vakoch of Medi. I did the video about their Arecibo message recently, and Medi is the group that wants to message aliens. Um, he reached out to me. It was really awesome. We had a great conversation talking about why it's, uh, it, it would be a good thing to talk to aliens or try to talk to aliens and how the real benefit in doing that really is just kind of discovering our own place in the universe. It was a really interesting conversation. So if you want to check it out, put a link right there. I'll put a link down in the description. Um, definitely go, go see what you think. Please like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, do check out some of my other videos. I talk about very random topics on random Thursdays and Mondays I do more uh, technological and science oriented videos. And if you like like those please subscribe because i come back with videos mondays and thursdays all right that's enough for now you guys go out you have an eye-opening week and i'll see you on monday love you guys take care